I'm Wendy Wilson and I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Realizing Potential. Today I have with me in the studio, he has to be probably the hardest working man in <laughs> Albany, Georgia and Southwest Georgia. He is none other than the Doherty County School System Superintendent, Ken Dyer. Uh, how, how are you? Are you? I'm good, fine? I'm good, I'm good. I'm so glad to have you on the good show. Man, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, um, I have always uh, admired you up close and at a distance um, in terms of your achievements and you just uh, are always committed and religiously hit the ground running and always very passionate about whatever role you uh, serve in. And so I was um, elated when you were, it was announced that you were the superintendent. You've been in the role for a couple of years now. Yeah, I just started my second year. Second uh, year. I started my second okay. year. Okay, yes, okay, okay. Well, let's let's go back to the origins okay. of Ken Dyer. <laughs> so tell us where you're from um, and, and the Albany State connection, okay. what you majored in. Okay, well I, well, I was born in Atlanta. We stayed there about six months. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I was reared in uh, Harris County, Georgia, mm. uh, from almost birth to I was 13. And okay. uh, then my mother uh, got a job on a Marine base here. Yes. So I, we moved to Albany in the summer before my ninth grade year. Mm. And I started at Albany High School. And then we moved to Westover Zone, and I finished my last two years at Westover High School. Okay. And um, I was trying to figure out what to do. Uh, and uh, a recruiter from Albany State came and let me know that I had uh, scored enough on a Saturday earn a presidential scholarship and that uh, I'd pay my way through school for four years. So I said, where do I sign? There you go. And, <laughs> and you go. that's how I ended up at Albany State. Okay. And it was a wonderful experience for me. Yes, yeah. yes. And what did you major in? I majored in accounting. Okay, and, okay. And, and, uh, and, I, and I eventually went and got my, my uh, MBA uh, with concentration in finance. Outstanding. So now you actually had a stint here at Albany State. Yes. Okay, and so you worked in the finance department? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, in fiscal affairs, I, was, I came after the flood of 1994. Mm to assist with the flood recovery, a $148.6 million flood recovery effort, wow. and, uh, and transform the campus of what we see today on, on the East Campus. Sure. And uh, that was a rewarding experience. And, and, uh, and then after that, I eventually uh, was promoted a few times and ended up being the, the uh, Vice President for Fiscal Affairs yes. and, and serving that role for several years. And uh, I went to a school in Texas mm -hmm. uh, to be the Chief Financial Officer. And I was asked to come back here to serve as the Chief of Staff uh, for a brief period of time. Uh, while we were getting our first privatized housing okay. uh, initiative off the ground. Mm -hmm. And then once we got that approved by the board, I left and went into private business and, uh, and then a sequence of things after that and ended up at the school system. <laughs> okay, well, and see, that's one of the many things that I love about you, Ken Dyer. So humble, so humble. And so what we need to go back to is, and I, I uh, spoke of this earlier before we actually started the taping, is what I've admired about your, your path is you perform so well on a job that employers, they do, they come back and say, I need you to come with me to my next move, <laughs> or I need you to serve in this role. So you clearly are, are unforgettable. What do you attribute that to? Certainly you've developed the, the, the acumen for your respective area finance, but there's some, there's some other key pieces, the importance, and we, we're, we try to stress this to our students currently about soft skill development, the importance of, um, uh, under-promising, over-delivering, <laughs> building healthy and maintaining relationships. And I would believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, that has been a part of your success. Well, uh, in, a, in a success, I, I, I've been able to enjoy it. Been, uh, first of all, I've uh, committed to praying about any job I've taken. Mm. I've never taken a job just for the money. Smart. And, and I believe that uh, every job that I've had, I've been, that's where I was supposed to be for that season in my life. And so if I'm placed there, I think I, I owe it to the employer or to the people that I serve uh, to do my best. And, um, and that was instilled in me uh, at home, of course, but it's reinforced when I was here at Albany State okay. uh, as a student leader, as SGA uh, vice president. Okay. And, uh, and uh, we had a lot of skills, leadership skills development uh, through our then vice president for uh, student affairs, C.W. Grant, who's mm -hmm. still uh, one of my good friends today. I okay. spoke to him just this weekend, as okay. a matter of fact, and uh, he's still teaching me uh, lessons right. of leadership. He's a great mentor. So, uh, so I think uh, the, the concept of servant leadership mm -hmm. is, is very important. 
Uh, we've been called to serve, yes. uh, and uh, and I, I take that very seriously. And so um, I don't know if I believe all the stuff you said about me, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but to the extent that that stuff is true, uh, I owe it all to to uh, my upbringing at home, of course, uh, my faith, and and the leadership skills that were developed uh, right here at Albany State. Excellent, this excellent. Um, again, um, that humility. Um, and, and another example of that is you then moved over into the school system mm -hmm. and originally were serving um, in a finance role, but d unbeknownst to you, were interviewing <laughs> uh, for the next position to serve as superintendent. So uh, tell us a little bit about how that started off. Yeah, I was uh, actually, after I left Auburn State, I went to a couple of institutes of uh, higher education in the finance and business arena. Yes. And then I was uh, recruited by the city to be the deputy uh, finance director. Okay. And I uh, stayed there for a while. I enjoyed it. Uh, but the school system called me and asked me to consider being the finance director. And um, uh, they were having some, some struggles at the time. Mm -hmm. We'll say that. And so I, 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 I said no twice. Did you? I did. I actually did. Okay. Uh, but uh, some people that I didn't uh, know very well uh, asked me to reconsider. And uh, and I did, and I'm, I'm glad I did. I, I started with the, the city as finance director in April of 2011, mm -hmm. and then uh, we had some changes in personnel, and I eventually uh, became the uh, executive director for finance and operations, uh, which is uh, responsible for finance, HR, facilities, IT, and some other areas, uh, purchasing and logistical services. Um, and we had a change in superintendency, and uh, during that time. The board asked me to serve as acting superintendent. So I was actually, this is my second stint as a superintendent. Okay. I was acting superintendent for about 30 days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, and it, fortunately, fortunately, it was during December. So we were out gotcha. of school. Gotcha, gotcha. But so then when the new superintendent came, he, he asked me to serve uh, as the associate superintendent uh -huh. and chief financial officer. Uh, so uh, that gave me a broader perspective because I still had the finance and operations piece as, sure. as the CFO, but also as the associate superintendent, I had a broad range of responsibilities that dealt with things outside of the, the finance and operations arena. And so, uh, and I'm a firm believer it, if you're gonna make decisions about resources uh, and about the, the strategic direction of an organization, you have to understand the core business. So I began to go to professional development and classes on curriculum development, on things that is part of our core Germain operation. That area. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so I, I learned uh, enough to be uh, to be effective and leading those effective. efforts. Yeah, yes, yeah. highly effective. I would have to agree. And so then again, serving in the associate uh, role, um, and I know you had some. Um, one of the um, again, many things that I uh, respect and admire about you is you understand and appreciate the value of lifelong learning. Yes, and so, um, as you just shared, I needed to then um, develop uh, an understanding and even a mastery of the arena that I'm right. currently serving in. Um, so that's, that's valuable. But again, surrounding yourself intentionally around people who can help to make you better. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah, Dr. Mosley, uh, the superintendent, yes. who, who, he, he, uh, he included me on, on just about every major decision that we had to make. Excellent. Now he made the final decision, of mm -hmm. course, but he he listened to to uh, a, a small group of people mm -hmm. who were his key advisors, and uh, I'm happy to have been one of those, and I learned a lot from him. Sure. Uh, he, he calls it the school business. I learned a lot about the school business <laughs> from uh, from Dr. Mosley, and uh, and I I think that experience with him uh, helped uh, prepare me for for the next phase in my life, which is what I'm doing right now. Yes. And I didn't even know. That that phase was coming. You're preparing yeah, for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unfortunately, for Dr. Moody, he he uh, was diagnosed with with uh, uh, cancer, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, he he had to go through chemo and radiation. Okay. And he couldn't do all the things he was doing before, and so he he uh, he relied heavily on me, and uh, in fact, I offered myself to, to help because I knew he was struggling with some things. Yes. And so he was still sharp uh, mentally, Indeed. but physically he couldn't do all the things that he had done before. So I stood in the gap a, a few times for him. Excellent. And as a result, I learned a lot about what he needed to do mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and what superintendents need to do. And of course, I listened to him. We, we, we met several times a day about things. And then if I had to represent him somewhere, he briefed me uh, on his position on things and then we would move forward. And we, it worked well for about a year and a half. Okay. Because he was struggling with that, that yes. diagnosis for a while. I'm happy to say now he is cancer free. Outstanding. And I just talked to him uh, a couple of days ago. Okay. And he's doing quite well. We, we're going out to lunch again uh, sometime soon. Okay. But uh, but he uh, he did announce his uh, retirement a year earlier than he had, he had, he anticipated, 
and uh, the board was considering doing a search. And um, at one of the meetings, uh, they announced that they were not going to do a search, and they were going to make an appointment. Mm. And they said they were going to appoint. They they were going to offer me the superintendency. Okay. And it was uh, a bit of a shock, and uh, had not. Uh, so it, it took me a while. I went back, talked to my family, sure. uh, prayed about it again, because mm -hmm. I had some other opportunities okay. uh, uh, waiting on me elsewhere. But I, I believe that this is where I'm supposed to be at this season of my life. Absolutely. And and so far it's been a, a wonderful experience. Uh, it, you know, it has its moments like all other jobs. Oh yes, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> but, sure. But the uh, the the level of responsibility and the uh, sense of accountability that I have to to Southwest Georgia uh, is uh, it outweighs any challenges that we may face. It, it's 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 glaringly obvious your your um, your commitment to this community, the school system. Um, let me go back to uh, Dr. Mosley, and mm -hmm. he he's a uh, a great mind yes, and um, you know respected in so many different regions because of his contributions to the K through 12 mm -hmm. system and mm -hmm. um, education overall. Uh, but any any great and outstanding leader, they want to. Um, uh, they are in a position to hand the reins over to right. somebody and they're comfortable in who they are. They already approach that decision knowing that this next person will do an even better job than I was able to do. And so it's clear that he, he saw that in you and, and started grooming um, because again, you, you want your legacy to, to live, on, live on, if you will, through someone else right. and then they do the same. Right. So uh, that speaks volumes about, about him um, and his confidence and ability in you and you certainly uh, have proven that. So uh, now let me say on a selfish note, the next time you all have lunch, include me because I need to soak up <laughs> yes, some of that knowledge um, and wisdom that uh, and that would be great, get it from, from both great men. So don't, um, don't, don't forget about me on that one, but do tell him I said um, hello oh, next time you speak with them. I certainly will. So now you, you've hit the, uh, about to approach your second year mark yes, in the role. Um, and before we uh, started taping, you said, I just spoke with him the other day and he called to congratulate me. Oh, yes, ma'am. So let's share with the viewing audience what that congratulations was about. Well, just yesterday, uh, the, the graduation, uh, on Wednesday, the graduation uh, rate results came out for the 2017-18 school year. And uh, the Dorothy County School System, for the third year in a row, we surpassed the state average. And uh, we're at about 86% right now. And, uh, and for the first time, uh, all of our high schools uh, in the 80s, and That's all of our high beautiful. schools surpassed the state average. Beautiful so he called news. to congratulate me on that, and of course I reminded him that uh, all I did was empower the principals to do their job, sure. uh, get out of their way for the most part, mm -hmm. and if they had any challenges that I could assist them with getting let addressed, I addressed those and, and then moved out of the way again, let them do their job. So the, uh, the book of the uh, accolades should go to our principals, our teachers, mm -hmm. and most importantly our students yes. who, uh, who are committed to bettering themselves and, and making a better life for themselves. I love that. Uh, that's great news. I have a high schooler at, at Westover, <laughs> so yeah, that, that's good to know. Uh, retention is also key, but mm -hmm. those graduation numbers, and that has a ripple effect throughout right. the community, throughout mm -hmm. the nation, that attracts business and industries um, uh, to this area, so you are certainly uh, doing your role. Uh, before we wrap up, I want to cover the whole charter piece. Okay. Um, it, it, it comes with, it, over the years, has come with some controversy um, uh, nationally. Mm -hmm. um, and l let's talk about the value and the importance that it brings through the entire school system and what you all have been able to do with it, Doherty County um, specifically. Yes, ma'am. Well, the, 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 the controversy uh, throughout the years has dealt with charter schools, independent charter schools mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some value in, in, in the charter concept. Um, and so we saw the value as a school system. So we decided to go uh, to make our whole system a charter. So all of our schools operate under one charter. And uh, what that does, it provides us with broad flexibility from Title 20, which is the, the, the education section of Georgia law. Uh, no matter how well-intentioned our state legislators are, no matter how wise they are, no one or no group of people can write one law, one set of laws that perfectly fit 180 school systems in the state of Georgia. Mm. So what the charter system allows us, it provides us with the flexibility to, uh, to innovate and use uh, our creativity to meet the unique needs of our students in the Dorothy County school system. Okay. And so we found uh, a great success in, in that charter system. Uh, one of the great pieces of that is the local school governance team. Each school has a local school governance team that's more than just an advisory council. They actually provide governance mm. for each school and it's comprised of um, 
the uh, parent representative, community representatives, and some school system representatives. Okay. And uh, so they, they go through budgets, they look at academic programs, they look at achievement results, and they hold themselves accountable for that. And so uh, I gladly give up some of the authority that's vested in the superintendent to those local school governance teams because they're closer to the ground. Sure. Uh, they're there every day working with those kids. And so uh, we've, we've been glad to partner with those local school governance teams throughout uh, our school system. And uh, I meet with them once a quarter, uh, an advisory council, to find out what's working well, what's not working so well, and how we can improve moving forward because the key is always trying to improve. Absolutely. And so uh, and that's a major partnership. And uh, we've been focusing on partnerships um, of this school system uh, uh, for this year. Uh, and we have some tremendous partners. Uh, and the College of Career Academy is part of our charter system. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you mentioned economic development earlier. Yes. And that's, that's one of the things we, we noticed um, that industry partners were saying they, some graduates, high school graduates, college graduates, uh, lack some of the skills they needed uh, when entering the workforce. So we had a round table and uh, we uh, focus groups to talk to some industry leaders to find out what those skills are. And, uh, and so we have developed a sense of, um, now we have 14 high demand career pathways that we, that we have at our College and Career Academy and they're all designed to meet the needs of the industry in Southwest Georgia. And so we partner with those industry leaders to help develop our curriculum and create internship or work-based learning opportunities uh, to help prepare those students for the next phase in their life, whether it's uh, college, uh, uh, four-year college, a technical college, uh, entering into, into military service, or going in directly into the workforce with some, uh, in some high demand career field. Sure. And so that's, that's the key trying to prepare our students for a better life, uh, and, uh, and I think we're doing that, and I'm pleased with it. I, I'm, I'm pleased, too, and I'm excited um, that you all, again, are being um, very intentional and methodical with your approach mm -hmm. to do that, and so you're absolutely right, and I have an opportunity to talk to um, both industry leaders and more so even individuals in the higher ed mm -hmm. spectrum, and it is across the board that need for soft skills yes, um, and the, soft, uh, the social graces. Right. And so we do a great job in terms of giving them the preparation academically mm -hmm. so they walk up with a degree right. and the uh, full understanding of how to execute and perform mm -hmm. in their respective roles. Mm -hmm. But that other piece, which is, I, I liken it to hand and glove, you right. have to have that, yes, the social skill piece. Mm -hmm. So that you all are working on that through those key formative um, years right. once they then enter their their um, institution, post-secondary institution, mm -hmm. we're just then fine-tuning right, that. That's right, that's right. So that's mm -hmm. excellent. That's right. The technical skills are important, but those oh, soft yes. skills oh are vitally gosh. important it's as well. It's yeah. essential, yeah. yeah. And so, you know, we operate uh, oftentimes in our silos. So when we hear of challenges in this area, we think it's just us. Mm -hmm. And when I talk to people who are either in Baltimore and San Diego or- Same problems. It's the same, same problem. Yeah. 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 I, I like to call them opportunities. <laughs> I, I like that, I need to change my language. <laughs> opportunities. Okay, great, great. Thank you for that. Yes, Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So I'm curious, you know, um, the, the viewers know um, I, I love to read mm -hmm. and I, it's just um, so uh, crucial to, to my existence. Um, so uh, share with, uh, uh, with me and then the viewers as well a, a book that you perhaps have recently read that, that impacted you um, mm -hmm. and for what reasons? Uh, I think a couple of books I read, but I think one that uh, that has impacted me is, is called The Four Disciplines of Execution. Okay. And uh, it was referred to me by a friend of mine, a business colleague of mine, and uh, I, I believe, I, I've said this to the leaders in the school system, that uh, what separates uh, leaders mm -hmm. from great leaders yes. is their ability to execute. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we all need to plan, we all need to, to uh, do strategy, uh, but the road meets the road in terms of execution. And so this book talks about the four disciplines of execution and it outlines what those four disciplines are. And so I read that very intently and okay. I took notes and I, I referred to <laughs> it uh, uh, quite often, but it, it helped me to understand, uh, reinforce my belief that execution is key mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to uh, uh, improvement. Yes. And whether you're trying to improve a school system, uh, a university mm -hmm. uh, or, or community at large, sure. uh, you have to execute the plan eventually. And so if you execute with discipline, mm -hmm. uh, then you have a far uh, higher probability uh, for success. I agree. I'll have to um, get that book. Um, and what uh, struck me about you sharing um, 
how it impacted you is as fundamental as that is because mm -hmm. There is a point where you must execute right. the plan, mm -hmm. but so many people stop at the planning right. process. Right. I don't know if that's just fear um, or the, the mindset that it's, you know, not as perfect as you want it to be before you press play on right. it. Right. Um, and so I, I think so many people fail and organizations fail because of their inability right. to execute. Yeah. And it, it's, uh, it's important because uh, People talk about transformational leaders. Yes. And uh, I don't think there's any other leader than a transformational mm, leader. Good point. Are you not transforming an organization? Are you really leading it? There you go. Uh, are you yeah. just you just babysitting? Sure. Uh, or just uh, taking a uh, taking a seat yes. uh, until it's time for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So we've been given a window of opportunity as leaders to make an impact uh, in our organizations, and uh, if we don't take advantage of that window of opportunity, it's an indictment on us. It is. And, and in order to make an impact, you you have to execute. Absolutely. You have to plan. You have to uh, develop strategy. And uh, but eventually you have to execute. You do. And so uh, and if you don't execute, you're not going to transform right. the organization. Right. And so that's what we that's what we key in on. I, I love that. And um, you just also made me think that um, you, you do it when you do that, you do a disservice to the organization. Right. So I'm sure as you do and I do in my in my role, you you have to constantly have conversations with yourself. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. And, and be honest enough that when you stop doing that, then you need to make make a decision because that, it's, it's it's unfair. Yeah, it's everything. There's a season, and mm -hmm. at, at a point where you don't feel that fire in your belly anymore, and you don't yeah. see the need to execute and make a difference. And maybe that season in your life is over. It's over, and it's time to find something else that that impi that inspires you to do great things. So, uh, and uh, and you should be doing a disservice to the organization, and uh, we do. But more importantly, if we didn't do what we we're supposed to do as a, in a school system or in a university, we did a disservice to the people we are called to serve, and that's. That's our youth, Indeed. and uh, you know we don't prepare them for the future. Then we're doing a disservice to the entire world. Mm. Okay, well I can't think of a better note. To, that's a lot to, to. It's a powerful statement, and you're absolutely right because we do in our each in each of our roles, um, we are designed to impact the world. Yeah. We may not see it, but mm -hmm. because we have the ability to touch someone, and then they touch a thousand other people. Um, then yeah, we, we leave our, our mark, our DNA on, on everything yeah. that we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's outstanding. It's kind of scary when you think about it. It <laughs> is, that's why, so well, let's end on that note. I, I've got to go and, and register, uh, or um, let that register and ponder that for a moment. But no, thank you for sharing that. And just thank you for um, all that you continue to represent. Um, you know, you epitomize what an, an Albany State alum should should be. Um, no, no, you do. And again, I love the humility that you always exhibit, um, but it is. And ideally, that's what we want our students to do. Um, we, we, we work, um, and, and as you, the word opportunity, um, and, and try to advance those opportunities in terms of our role of creating a holistic education. Mm -hmm. Of course, they have a major responsibility right. as a, a, st a stakeholder in their educational process. Mm -hmm. But you, you exhibit that on, on so, so many different levels, the, the continuous process of educating yourself, surrounding yourself with people. And the piece that I love is, and this is what you ideally want to do in your career, not go after the job, but have the job come to meet you and say, hey, uh, we need you, we see your expertise. And, and that's what I think a lot of students miss all the time, is that people are always watching you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, so you always have to be on your best behavior. Always, <laughs> always, and, and, always. And, uh, and just, just try to do the best you can wherever that's you right, are uh, right. for the time you're allowed to serve in that role. Absolutely. And uh, that's what I try to do. Okay. Well, you do it very well, sir. Thank you for your service. I'm so glad you finally said yes to the Doherty <laughs> County School System uh, and your ability to influence and impact so many different lives. And just honored to um, work with you in the partnership that we have and, and then to say that you're an Albany State alum. Well, we will I'm, forever brag about that. I'm proud to be an Albany State alum. No I doubt know, about it. I know. No I know, thank I know. you for thank you for inviting me, and I'm My glad pleasure. I came. Yes, ma'am. Come back anytime, and certainly come back anytime to tell us about those opportunities, but certainly those successes. Yes, we need to hear more of that. Yes, ma'am. We'll do. Okay, excellent. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure, viewers. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of Realizing Potential. I'm Wendy Wilson, and we will see you next time.